Hi, I'm Arvada Mayor Mark Williams. Today I've taken off my jacket and tie, gotten on top of this big boy, complete with cup holder, 12 foot wide swath. Today on Arvada Insights, the secret of going green. Joining me today is the head of the Arvada Parks Department, Mike McDonald. You've been with the city 13 years. Yeah, good to we're see you, We're thrilled Mark. to have you. Yeah, thank you very much. Michael, you know, we're so proud of the parks that we have here in the city of Arvada. Tell us a little bit about how many acres we have, some, th some general facts about the parks here in Arvada. Well, in all, we maintain about 660 irrigated acres. So if you have sprinkler systems throughout all those areas, and that includes your neighborhood parks, your sports complexes, such as Stinger here. Um, all of our buildings and facilities and of course our landscape medians. And in total we have about 3,500 acres of park property maintained which includes of course a lot of open space properties now. So. Michael, you, uh, you do all this throughout the spring, summer and fall. You have to take care of the parks. You have to deal with some vandalism issues. Share some information about that with the citizens. Yeah, unfortunately vandalism is something that comes with uh, misuse, abuse of, of parks. Most of the people are really good about uh, what they do in the parks but Last year alone, we had a little bit over 1,500 hours of, of staff time just making repairs and, and corrections on what people maybe tore up. Besides that, though, um, we do an awful lot of uh, projects on um, trying to make things better it is kind of a motto we have, uh, building new retaining walls, refreshing playgrounds. Uh, this year, the staff went through and repainted all the foul poles in, in the parks, and, and uh, all the trash cans are repainted once a year. We, of course, do a ton of snow removal, about 220 uh, routes and all for that over the winter time, so make sure everybody has access to the parks. And uh, then your typical maintenance, uh, seasonal pruning of plants and, and uh, turf repairs and things like that that we have to do during the year. Well, Michael, hopefully I didn't tear up this bad boy, but I know they do require <laughs> maintenance. Yeah. What kind of staff do you have to do that and what's required in maintenance? Actually, the staff are a function of the uh, Public Works Department and it's the fleet maintenance crew. Uh, they have two locations they work out of, our Indiana shop and the old Wadsworth location. Uh, it's year-round maintenance on all of our equipment. Uh, again, sometimes they use these for snow removal, but uh, specifically for mowing, for example, they'll, uh, during the wintertime, they go a complete overthrow of, of everything about the piece of equipment, running all the hydraulic hoses and the electrical and going through the motor and all that. And then uh, during the summer when we're operating, we have our preventative maintenance program, which they're really good about. There's so many hours that comes on a piece of equipment or so many miles on a truck, it comes in for typical preventative maintenance of oil changes or filters or whatever. Also, an awful lot of, uh, with the mowers we have, such as this one, it has seven blades on it. And one of the worst things you want to have for turf is a dull blade. So once a week, we get brand new fresh blades installed on those. Why don't you show us one of those blades and what you have yeah. to do to maintain them? Well, again, uh, this is done by our fleet staff. They work real hard, making sure we have a good, clean edge on these things. Uh, if somebody was mowing their yard, for example, and the, the blade was dull, as would happen in one of our parks, a couple days after you'd mow, you start getting a white little uh, frazzled ends on your grass. It shows more or less it's ripping instead of cutting it. It's harder on your mower, and it's just not good for your turf. So this is pretty key, really, for uh, keeping a good cut on your grass. And we have so many different types of mowers. Like this one, there's uh, so many different applications. This one, for example, we use on our athletic fields. Uh, it's a striping mower. So if you're out at Coors Field and you see the diamond cut or the checkerboard, the squares, whatever, we uh, do similar cuts on all of our athletic fields. And uh, really the cut, the way you get it, is just a shadow and a shade, uh, reflection of the sun and the shade of the grass. On, on these, for example, there's a roller on the back which lays down the grass after it's been cut in a certain direction so you get that that striping technique or the, the checkerboard or whatever you want to have. So, right. Mike, in addition to keeping the blades sharp and having the, the uh, mower equipment in great shape, how else do you keep the grass so green? Well, there's there's a lot of things that we do, of course, on a grander scale than what you would have in your in your home, but uh, we overseed, especially on our athletic fields where areas are worn. We'll overseed throughout the entire year and try to keep grass growing back in. Uh, aeration to help with uh, reduction of compaction Top dressing, which is uh, a sand and, and nutrient-based type of application put over the top. 
uh, fertilization, uh, the irrigation alone, it's an amazing the amount of irrigation we have. We have uh, uh, our Motorola system, which is uh, two um, stations set up at our main shop, which operate pretty much the controllers throughout the entire park system. So if you're ever driving through a, and you see a median or a park that has one of these green boxes standing up, uh, inside of that is the radio components that are used to control the irrigation and the staff are able to give input on that um, as far as how many gallons they want to put down and, and all that. Also works out for a great application for us uh, if there's an issue in a park. Tells us immediately if there's a break or something like that instead of the old school way of you go out and all of a sudden after two or three days you have a big flow of water coming out of somewhere so that's very important we do a, an awful lot of uh, uh, changing the directions when we mow too which is healthy for as anybody in their yard even just to get the grass to grow different directions for you so well, that's it's all some, good stuff that's some great input into yeah. into those issues mm -hmm. you know Arvada has been designated as a tree city talk to us a little about the uh, trees and the plants that our staff maintains well um, we have well over 30,000 trees now in the city's inventory. Uh, a lot of them are aging and a lot of uh, new plantings. If you go around many of our parks, you'll see the stakes up where the new trees have been planted. Um, we do a, a big Arbor Day program and, and, uh, tree, and of course we've been Tree City USA for I think now over 25 years. Um, so we have a full service forestry crew who assist our, our regular park maintenance staff in the pruning of the trees. They have the bucket truck and the, the chipper and the grinders and and uh, staff with a lot of expertise, they can even do the rope and saddle up in the 60, 70 foot trees um, and go up there and cut with chainsaws or saws or whatever. So really we're able to provide every type of service you can think of for the tree work that we have done. And then of course we do the year round pruning of our plants and, and the uh, seasonal planting of flowers or perennials or, or those type of things. Yeah. Well, Mike, that's absolutely great. Thanks for the information you've shared with us today. Thanks to you and your parks department. You make Arvada proud. Thank you. And, and it's just great to have you as part of our team. All right. Appreciate it. I'm Arvada Mayor Mark Williams. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Arvada Insights. That's a wrap.